power of the Holy Spirit helps you become teachable. Relying on the Holy Spirit allows you to become teachable because he's the teacher. He's the best teacher of all. Well, you know, experience is the best teacher. I told somebody, you just lied. I said, that's in the world. Experience, and that's a whole cliche, wise tales and fables. Word of God said the Holy Spirit is the teacher. Did he not say that? All right, we're going to stop right there. Give me 1 Corinthians 6 and 17. Let's put this lesson in order. So we want to talk about uh, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit prepares you to become teachable. So why? You're going you're gonna to become a good student of the word of God because God is going to test you throughout your whole life. You're going to be tested. You're going to be tested. You can't deem yourself somewhere that you ain't been tested in. You can't say you here when you only took a test down there. Better believe it. Before you go or, or grow anywhere, you're going to be tested. Jesus was tested. And he proved out. He got a name that is above every name. Every knee going to bow. All right, every tongue going to confess. Jesus is Lord whether you do it willfully or be made to. And then send us to hell. Come on, give me that verse. All right. What is that, 2 Corinthians? I want 1 Corinthians. What did I say? Uh, yeah, I thought so. 1 Corinthians, I'm looking. I got it on my paper. Yeah, yeah. Let's get this straight right now. My maiden taught Sunday, and that verse was, uh, come, come, come to me, all you who are laboring, I hear you late. Now, that, that, to me, he's calling you out of sin to get rid of your sin problem. That's a burden. That's a problem. You can't serve him with a burden on you. But we lay aside every weight and sin. Come here. Come to me. Come on. But the one who is united and joined to the Lord is one with him. That's what I wanted out of there. Now, you with him. You're one with him. You're united with him. That's true. But it may have or may have not happened because you didn't study. He gave us, the Bible said we have the mind of Christ. In Corinthians, who have, who have, who have known the mind of the Lord that they may instruct him? Paul said, for we do. We have the mind of Christ. We must renew our minds. You, if you're going to give yourself to him, you're going to have to, you're going to be one with him. You've got to renew your mind with what he said. Not with how you feel. Okay? We got that out of the way. All right? Now, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. What do that mean? One spirit. One spirit. One spirit. How do the Lord feel about hate? How do the Lord feel about being stingy? How do Jesus feel about you uh, uh, in turmoil with your brother and sister? How does he feel about you getting angry all the time? How do you feel about, how do Jesus feel about you spewing words all over and, and, and just saying things, letting stuff just utterly come out of your mouth? How do Jesus feel about that? You, you, you won. He hates sin. How do you feel about it? That's what I'm trying to get you to see. Because all this and lining yourself up and being united with him helps you pass tests. It helps you go through with flag colors. I don't want to pass off no D. Hmm. So, with that being said, 2 Timothy. Uh, Second Timothy, I'm back here again. Uh, it says, study to do your best. Second Timothy 2. Second Timothy 2. Second Timothy 2, 15, 14, 15, and 16. We're going to read that on out. Then we're going to move forward with this lesson tonight. Know that if you say you're going to be tested, why is this happening to me? The misconception of the world, well, we're going to be saved. And once I give my life to Christ, ain't nothing going to happen to me. That's how people felt. 
If I had wings, I'd fly away. Don't want to go through nothing. Want to escape all the trouble. Soon I will. I used to like that song. Uh, we'll be done because I was in the mail because we used to sing with the troubles of this world. I'll be the trouble, all this trouble down here. Trouble, trouble, trouble. Oh, Jesus would be a good cheer. I overcame the world of trouble. <laughs> ah, I overcame that. Where to overcome it? Greater is he. Snapping and popping when a trial comes. Oh, Lord, what do I do? Oh, Lord, what do, I do? Ah. Come on, give me that. Come on. Remind the people of these facts and solemnly charge them. I'm charging y'all and myself first. Let me put the thing on me. I'm charging myself and you. Your ears are guilty because you heard it. Remember that. Write that down. It went in your ear. Charge them in the presence of God. The angels are here. God is here. The Holy Spirit is here. Everybody here. Because this ministry has been anointed and appointed by God. And I've been sent here to avoid petty conversation. Controversy, excuse me. Over word. Well, it's ecclesia. I say ecclesia. That means all who have believed and obeyed the gospel. That is the church. The word ecclesia in the Greek means church. The one who believes. That's what the church is. The one who believes and obeys. That's the church. You can't say you're the church when you don't believe and obey. Exclusia. So I had a man going to say, no, it's so, he, he named something else. I said, I know what it means. Just because you said it one way, I ain't arguing with you, bro. I left him sitting on his porch, and I went back to my house. Everybody want to argue on how to pronounce it. I know what it means, and I can live it. I done been through this. What, what do it matter? Some people say exusa. Some people say exusia like I do. So what's the big deal? I know what it means. <laughs> but see, I done been in an arena where they want to argue about pronunciation. I said, who arguing about obeying it? Nobody. <laughs> that ain't popular. Come on. That's crazy. Listen, controversy over words, which does no good. What did Paul say? It don't do no good. In, in, second Cor in, in first Corinthians, second chapter, Paul said, and when I came to you, I didn't come with excellent speech. I didn't come in man wisdom, eloquent speech, but I did come in the power, in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. See, we want to get caught up with rhetoric and diction. There's nothing wrong with good diction. I, I, I can listen to anybody, whether they talking bad English, if they talking the word, I ain't listening for the English, I'm listening for the word. But I can hear the good diction. I'm not looking for these big philosophizing words. I'm listening for the word of God and in the order and the manner in which it's given. But if it's wrong, I can rearrange it while they're giving it. I said, that go here, this go here. That's what I be doing. Not judging the preacher, but I'm putting the word in order for me. And I'm teaching y'all how to do that. Don't scrutinize nobody because they only might be doing the best that they could do. But I know enough word to know the order of it in which it goes. So let's not get caught up with that. Let's not get caught up with that. Because what you need to get caught up with some tests coming down the pipe on you. See, and if you get caught up with that, then when Satan go to shooting bazookas and everything at you, M16s and tanks and stuff at you, you hollering, where, where did this come from? Nobody warned you for that. But it's coming. Listen. Listen, avoid petty controversy over words which does no good. And upsets and undermine. Listen what it does. Satan knows what he's doing. It upsets and undermine and, and ruin the faith of those who listen. Because somebody want to hear that. I don't. I don't. So don't give ear to that mess. Because there's a lot of stuff on that, on that, on that stuff, YouTube and everywhere, else, popping up everywhere. And it ain't the truth. Come on. Listen. It's going to ruin the faith of those who listen. Study! <laughs> now, uh, you see, if you study all the time, you, you, you don't study one night before a test like some people do. If you study all the time up until the test, you'll breathe. You'll breathe through there. be laughing. Everybody else sweating, looking over on your paper. But you didn't study because, guess what? You, you studied a month. You knew the test was coming. You knew the test was coming. But you waited till the night of. How many of 
y'all did that. I went to my instructor and said, I don't understand this lesson. You need to break this down. They would. Anytime I, I didn't understand, I said, I need to come by your office. Let me know what time. I'll be there at lunch. Don't want to, I'll take my lunch break at this time. i go by there. Let's break this down. They would go over and over. I said, I got it now. I'll turn this in, so on and so. And, and, and they, they saw that I had a knack for learning, so they took out time with me. When a good teacher find out you want to learn, they are, they are willing to teach I ain't, I ain't never had an instructor that wouldn't listen to me and take time out to help me understand what I didn't understand. So when some people don't understand, why do they sit in the class and be quiet and quiet like don't want nobody to know? But the teacher obviously know you don't know. They can look at you and tell you don't know. <laughs> in math class, I used to say, the teacher want to shut my mouth. Okay, in the fifth grade at Power uh, School over there on Livingston tomorrow. We had, we had uh, that school highway broke up. What they call that? C-Pack? C-what? C-Box? Uh-uh. The whole uh, school. Eight. It was something over there. I would teach them. We had all the subjects in one class. We didn't change class like that. All right. Put that book up and let's pull out our math book. Oh. She know how to shut me up. I ain't said nothing through that whole bag up here. Daniel, uh, what is sometimes something? <laughs> she know how to get me. And Satan know how to get you too. Because he know you don't know because he's going to shoot at you. He's coming. And God going to allow him to come. Because Satan tempts God test. All right, come on. Let's get through this. Do your best to present yourself to God already approved. By what? Obeying the word of God. A workman working the scriptures. Test, you see, you, you're working it because you went through trial and you used the scripture in the trial. In the test, you passed because you used the word. How you going to flunk using the answer? How you going to flunk using the answer? Unless you didn't believe the answer. You ever used something you really didn't believe in? Every product you got in your house, you believe in some form or fashion that it works. Bleach, you, you believe in. Don dishwashing, get some of that off brand. Get star dishwashing liquid. Your dish is going to be greasy. <laughs> I ain't never heard of star. That's a, but Don will get it. Don is the number one selling dishwashing liquid, right? But when you want to be cheap, what you go get? Now, some of that HX stuff will work if you use the whole bottle. <laughs> uh huh. Come on. Look, a God approved, a workman tested by trial has no reason to be ashamed. You don't have no reason to be ashamed. Why? Accurately. Handling and skillfully. That means cutting scripture, placing them in their proper place. Skillfully, accurately, handling, skillfully, teaching the word of truth. The Holy Spirit helps me to play scripture. He'll give me a script and it fits right in. But avoid all irrelevant babble. I've seen people get to arguing about scripture. A lot. And nobody going to do it, but they just want to argue and talk about it. Come on. Say it here. And godless, godless, God not in this, chatter with it profane Empty words, for it will lead to further. And their teaching will spread like gangrene, like cancer. So it is with him and Neos and Philetus, these two false prophets up here teaching, who have deviated from the truth. I ain't going no further. Let's, let, let's get out of this. Now, let's go forward with the lesson tonight. Now, all right, let's go to Ara, Amara. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 through 13. And then we're going to go back down and go to 10, uh, first top of that chapter, and we're going to teach. This is, I want y'all to hear this. Because as we learn the word of God, you're going to be tested. And you, if I'm giving you all the answers, everything that I know, I give it to y'all. It's the tests that I flunked, and I, 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 I remember not trusting God when I didn't trust God. And I flunked a lot. 
I went against God. I knew what God, the Holy Spirit, was leading me to do, and I went against him, and I paid for it. And you better learn to trust God the first time. It says a lot when you keep having to take a test over, and you know all the answers. Come on. Come on. Because God looking at you, he ain't looking at the people. Therefore, let the one who thinks he stands firm, immune to temptation. When you get there, you headed for trouble. Oh, it ain't gonna happen to me. Yeah. If it, I, I, all of us gonna be tested. All of us gonna be, be tried. Nobody's exempt from this. Jesus wasn't exempt from it, and you're not gonna be. Listen, some, some people think they're immune to it. Temptation. I, I, Satan can't tempt me. Okay. He tempted Jesus. All this I'll give you. Same temp, temptation he gave uh, 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 Jesus, he gave to man. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Jesus didn't bite, but look how many people have bitten. What Hollywood is all about? What do they show? Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. Hollywood said, look at me, I'm a star. You ain't no star to me. Because you acting, you ain't that. You reading the script. They got all these uh, green screen, special effects, and you want to be applauded for that. That ain't real. This real. Put that up there. That's real. Now, to the world, that's somebody. But I'm, I, don't know, I don't look at people like that. Hollywood is not something that I, I, I look at to define who I am. I found myself in Christ. That's where my focus is, not these folks. Because I can tell you about Hollywood, most of the folk on there are gay. They love to have orgies. Oh, they don't? Yes, they do. That's what Hollywood is about. Okay? Are oh, you just jealous and hating on them? No, I ain't hating on nobody like that now. No, 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 no. Therefore, let the ones who think he stands firm immune to temptation being overconfident and self-righteous. Take care that he does not fall into sin and condemnation. You see? See that verse? It can happen. It, ha it can happen. No temptation. Listen. Regardless of his source, this is a temptation. Listen, no temptation, regardless of his source, has overtaken or enticed you that is not common. It's just common to human experience. You done did it when you was a sinner. You know what's coming at you. You ought to be able to recognize it. But Satan covered it up and put a little bow on it, make it look like it's something different. Same stuff we were doing in the world, he's coming back at you with it. And God is allowing him because he wants to see where your loyalty is. That's why he's testing you. He wants to see where your loyalty is. In the wilderness, God could have took the children of Israel out of Egypt straight into the promised land. They had 400 years of Egypt in them. Egypt was worldly. They, they offered sacrifices to false gods. It's people who say they believe in God, believe in horoscopes. They believe in tarot card reading. They believe in, in, in rabbit foot, being lucky, and, and, and superstitious and all that. How can you be believing Jesus and still believe if I step on the crack, they're going to break my mama back? Don't walk under no ladder. Don't sweep my feet. A lot of people believe that stuff. You can't believe both. Somebody wrong. Now, listen. No temptation regardless of its source. Regardless of the source. Where it comes from. Has overtaken or enticed you. That is not common. To a human experience. Me, as a human, you didn't experience this at some time in your life. Nor is any temptation unusual or beyond human resistance. Did y'all hear that? Listen, but God is faithful to his, the answer. What that telling you right there? What did that say? God is faithful to his word, which is the answer of Jesus. He is compassionate and trustworthy. Do we get that? He's compassionate and he's trustworthy. Why is it that we don't trust the, the process to go through the test? Jesus did.
This is how you grow by passing tests. This is how not become overconfident, but you have you have confidence in God going to do what he said he's going to do. But see, long as you saying my bad, I didn't mean to say it. I was feeling good. Uh, 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 what is that? Let's go and flip over here right quick. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the fifth verse, fifth chapter. Let's read fifth chapter. Ecclesiastes five. You got to be careful. Jesus, they never said my bad. I didn't mean it. Man, it's bad in the Ukraine. I know I told y'all I was going to do it, but let me finish that. Then I'll get back with you. That ain't Jesus. Nope. Death and life and the power of your tongue. Guard your steps and focus on what you are doing as you go to the house of God and draw near to listen rather than to offer the, uh, the careless or irreverent sacrifice of fools. Listen. For they are too ignorant to know they are doing evil. Two, do not be hasty with your mouth. Speaking careless words or vows or impulsive in thoughts to bring up a matter before God. You got to be careful. You've been inspired by the word and you say I'm going to do better and you go back and do the same thing. You can't do it. You can't say that. You shouldn't have never said it. I'm going to do better. You should have just said nothing. Because he'll go to offset of it. Your vow is always to God. It's never. And I told her that. My wife. When I made a vow, I didn't make it to her. I made it to God. Do you promise to do this and that? Yep. What happened to the vow? What happened? We didn't keep it, did we? See, that's what I'm saying. Be careful. Here it is right here. I'm trying to help you get the, get, the, get the foundation to help you pass tests. Be not hasty with your mouth. Speaking careless words or vows or vows or impulsive in thoughts, bringing up a matter before God. For God is in heaven, higher, and you on earth, lower. Spiritual realm, earthly realm. Life zone, dead zone. This dead down here. Spiritually dead down here. Help, life is up here. Life started spiritually first. For God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore let your words be what? Few. For the dreams come through uh, much effort and the voice of the of food through many words. God used to have to talk to me through dreams. He still do sometimes. But when I got real busy at one time, God had to talk to me, show me dreams because he couldn't tell me. I was too busy. When you make a vow or a pledge to who? Marriage vows, you bound to God. Do not put off paying it. What do you mean? Make good on it. For God takes no pleasure in fools who thoughtless mark him. What you doing? When you make a vow, knowing you ain't finna do it just to shut people up. Who you marking? Yeah, all right. I done talked. They've been teaching this a while. Pay what you, what, what you vowed. You got to go through with it. Wow. You see that, don't you? This is why a lot of people flunk tests because they don't believe that God is passionate and, and he's, he's compassionate about you and his word can keep you because you utter words foolishly. One thing God taught me when I started renewing my mind, be careful with what you say. Don't let everything come out of your mouth because you're going to be held accountable for it. Amen. This is a word planet. God spoke everything into existence, and we're supposed to be operating after his kind. We was made in his what? Image and likeness. So we just can't say anything and think it's cute because God heard it. <laughs> uh-huh. You see? This is why people don't, don't, don't pass a lot of tests because they don't trust. I don't know what I'm going to do. Amen. <laughs> you don't. Pay what you vow. For it is better that you should not vow than you should vow and not pay it. That means make good on what you said. Do not allow your speech to cause you to sin. You can sin with your mouth and saying something you know you don't mean. Yes, sir. And do not say before the messenger, the priest, the pastor, the apostle of God, it was a mistake. My bad. Ain't that what we love to say? Yeah. Why should God be angry? Because of your voice, your words, and destroy the work of your. Hmm, that's probably why things ain't working out. Hmm. 
I'm trying to lay a foundation to help you see that when you trust God's word and you say it, then you pretty much know when you get results that you can depend on God's word through a test. I'm going back to the disciple. Let's go to the other side. That's all he told. They got in the boat. Jesus went to sleep. Storm came. Wind blowing. Master, <laughs> cares not that we go die. <laughs> Jesus never told them they were going to die. Where did they get it from? From the wind. They saw the waves, and they said they were going to die. He never told them they were going to die. And I understand. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. We do. What causes us to say what we see and not say what we want? What causes that? That was a test on that sea. Was it not? That was a test. Did they plunk or pass? Jesus owed you a little faith. They could have stopped that. That's why he tested them to see what they were going to do. You're going to be tested to see what you were going to do. Come on. That's why we're here. So, God can destroy the work of your hand if you don't watch it. For in a multitude of dreams and a flood of words, that is worthlessness. Rather, uh, rever uh, rently, uh, fear God and worship him with all fear, respect, knowing who he is. If you know who he is, you'll be careful. Now, let me, let, me, let me say this. Words, Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no mean no. Anything after that, Jesus said, you lying. It's going to end up lying. So just say yes. Is that hard for some people to say yes? Yeah, it is. Out of 30 some years of the past, believe me. They'll say everything but yes. I still ain't heard that. All I need to hear is that. They, they won't say it because they don't want to incriminate themselves. You already incriminate. Trying to get you out and get you repented so you can get back in the graces of God. Now we got that out of the way. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 11. And let's get that. Then we go on to 1 Peter 4, 12 and 14. Now, relying on the Holy Spirit to help you pass tests. It didn't help Jesus. Uh-huh. Amen. It'll help you. Holy Spirit going to only bring up what what uh, uh, God done taught, what the Bible said, Jesus is going to show up and show out. I never repeated that. Well, I don't understand why would Jesus come and show up and show out. What's that about? Come on. For I do not want you to be unaware, believers, that our fathers, that our fathers were under the cloud in which God's presence, what? They had Shekinah cloud. They had a pillar cloud by day and a pillar fire by night. God's presence was in the cloud. People said, ooh, that was a Shekinah cloud in our church. That's Old Testament. The Holy Spirit, God's presence is inside, supposed to be inside of us. I understand that. So I don't need a Shekinah cloud. I got the Holy Spirit inside of me. They had Moses followed the cloud and the people followed Moses. Come on. That's, that's how they went. Now, they're coming out of Egypt now, in which God's presence went before them. And they all passed miraculously, safely through the Red Sea. God baptized all of them into Moses. These were Moses' people. Because when they were sinning, God said, Moses, get back down there. Your people sinning. That's what he told Moses. Your people. Come on. All right. Into Moses, into their safekeeping as their what? In the cloud and, and listen, in the cloud and in the sea, and all all of them ate. Listen, this is where it gets get a little scale in. All of them ate the same spiritual food and all of them drank the same spiritual drink. Stop. Every one of you in here hearing the same thing. All of us ain't hearing nothing no different, are we? Are we? We eating off the same plate. Everybody getting the same meal. Are, are we not? All right, come on, but here go. This is what set everybody apart. Listen. And all of them ate the same spiritual food, and all of them drank the same spiritual drink, for they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them, and that rock was? He was right out there with them. Yeah, he was right there. Nevertheless, 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 God was not well pleased with most of them. Stop right there. Wonder why. Wonder why he wasn't pleased with them. You need to ask yourself, is God pleased? Don't worry about me being pleased. Is God pleased with you? 
It ain't got nothing to do with me. It's got something to do with him. Come on. Because I want God to be pleased with me. God would not please. Well pleased with them. Most of them. With, uh, with most of them. For they were scattered along the ground in the wilderness because of their led to which led to they didn't have no self control. Now these things, stop right there. Well, well they didn't have the Holy Spirit and, and, and you know they've been in Egypt all that time. That's why God didn't take them straight into the promised land. Alright, now let's, let's talk about it. In Egypt, what did they see coming out of Egypt? They saw the Nile River, which was the God to the Egyptian, turn the blood. Didn't they? They saw lice. They saw frogs. They saw their sun god be defeated. It got dark. God allowed darkness. Now, over there where God's people lived in Goshen, it was light. They saw all that. They saw their cows fat and plump. They saw the Egyptian cows skinny die. Famine came upon the land. And yet, they still could not trust God to lead them to safety. They got down to the Red Sea and they went to complaining. Did they not? What was God doing? Showing them. God was testing them to see what showed them what was in their heart. They wasn't ready for the promised land. And see, if they had a God in the promised land, in that physical promised land, what was going to happen if God had to let them get in there? What was going to happen? What, what if God had to took us straight to heaven the way we are? With no teaching, with nothing, out of nine, they ain't renewed. What's going to happen when we get there? And I think a lot of people think because we won't be in this physical body, we just going to automatically get right. That ain't how that work. You, get, you start renewing your mind on this side. You start training your spirit on this side. You got to learn to live spiritually and put your flesh under the power of the Holy Spirit. This is what we're learning. That's what Jesus did. Jesus taught us that. But some people say, I want to go to heaven. But you're going to tear up heaven. There's going to be a lot of problems if God allows us to get there like that. Yeah. Good. Now, now, this is why we're learning this stuff, y'all. So God, scat look at it. They were scattered around in the wilderness. Their lack of self-control led to disobedience. What they do? Build a, build a golden calf. They left Egypt millionaires. God paid them for their sins, uh, for the uh, slave uh, that they went through. They got restitution. Did they not? Did they get restitution? Huh? They left Egypt millionaire. They got they 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 got they left that millionaire. Led them out in the wilderness. Moses went up to to uh, get the tablets from God. He come down. Every commandment God gave him, they had broke. They said, "This is the God that led us out of Egypt, a golden calf." Where that golden calf come from? It was in them. See, money only going to bring out what's in you. It don't bring, oh, they changed. That was already hidden in there. Drugs bring out the real you. When it, it, that's you. It's just hidden because you're quiet and reserved. Get the right spirits in you. All that is who you are. Money didn't change them. That's who they were. And God saw that they didn't, he didn't lead them to where no shopping malls were, but they still found a reason to jack up what he gave them. And then at the end, he told them, when it got so far, he said, Moses, take up an offering, everyone who was of a willing heart. Now, the ones that gave the gold, made the gold, uh, some of them came over on the other side, gave the gold up to make their golden calf, but most of them died. God opened up the ground, and a lot of them died that day. Here it is, it's up there. So he tested them. He tested them. Somebody, so, so many people love the world. When they leave the house of God, they, ain't, they really don't want to be there. They look. They got unfinished business in the world. And I said this. Somebody got mad at me. I said, all the people who said this church, this, this ministry was no longer anointed. I said, I don't hear their name nowhere where they're turning the world upside down since they so anointed. They don't even go to church now. See, that's the stuff I'm talking about. You want to make me look bad when really is So this is what's going on here. Come on. Now, because of their uh, uh, lack of self-control led to disobedience, which led 
to death. Now these things, the warning and the admonition took place as examples for us. Y'all see that? So that we would not crave evil things as they did. See, what you most love, you're going to go hard for. When you crave God, you're going to go hard for God. When you like God, you ain't going to go at him. When you love God, you're going to go after him. Do not be worshipers of handmade gods as some of them were. Just as it is written in scripture, the people sat down to eat and drink after sacrificing to the golden calf at Herop. And stood up to play in dozen and immorality activity. They were doing everything out there. They were having an orgy. And God sent Moses down there. There it is. Listen, we must not indulge in or tolerate sexual immorality. As some of them did. Twenty and three thousand suddenly fell dead. We must not tempt the Lord. That is, test his patience. Questioning his purpose or exploit his goodness as some of them did. They were killed by serpents and do not murmur, listen, in unwarranted discontent as some of them did. All they did was complain. You done led us out here to die, Moses. I, we wish we were back in Egypt bondage in slavery. And Jesus came preaching freedom and they say, who dare, I dare you to tell us. Listen, murmur is doubt and unbelief. When people ask me how I'm doing, I could be going to the store, hey, how you doing? I said, I cannot complain. Yeah, ain't no need because ain't nobody going to listen. I said, number one, God ain't listening to it because he's been too good for anybody to say anything negative to him. They, they don't want to talk no more. <laughs> what you discontent about? That job ain't over now. You ain't got that piece of clothes in the furniture or house or what? What you discontent about? It's a test now. He was testing them. God told them, he said, Moses, he said, it tell them everything that they spoke. He told them to go into the land, spy it out. He said, I'm going to give you the land. He told them up front he was going to give them the land, didn't he? They said, it's giants over. God has told you you are healed right now. God has told you you was blessed right now. Amen. What's the problem? Amen. You're being tested. What's the problem? God said you're out. You said not yet. <laughs> I'm just trying to show you the, the difference between us and them. There ain't too much no difference. Because when you go to complain, and like things ain't right. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm content right where I'm at. Paul said let every man be content. Paul said I've been with much and I've been without. I know how to be content in all. And we need to learn that. Because enjoy the times when there's plenty. Enjoy the time when it's lean. Because God is still God. So Lord, I don't care how tight it gets. You're God and I'm riding this thing out. I'm with you, baby. You done showed me you God. And <laughs> it looks bad right now. I ain't going by what it looked like. Looking under Jesus. <laughs> That's where we got to look. Come on. Come on. Now, right here. He told them to go get the land. Now, we like grasshoppers and they jazz. And Moses, they come back and put a bad report. They, them 12 spies, 11, 10 of them preached a message to the congregation before Joshua and Caleb came back with faith, didn't he? Oh, we can't do it. Oh, it's just like God said now. It's fruitful houses, gardens, everything over there, but the giants over there. Joshua said, shut up, quiet, quiet. Let's go take it now. Caleb said, let's go get it. God said, we can have it, it's ours. They were ready to stone Joshua and Caleb. <laughs> God said, Moses, everything that they spoken in my ear, that's in Numbers, read 14 chapter. Everything that they spoken in my ear, I'm going to bring it to pass. Told you. They said they can't get in there, and they won't. God listening. To everything come out of your mouth. And over in the fifth chapter of Ephesians, he said, don't jest. 
You don't be joking and playing like that. The Holy Spirit is confused. Come on. Here we go. Listen. And they were killed by serpents. And do not murmur in your own mourn to discontent. As some of them did. Were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example. And a warning to us. That they are written for our instruction to admonish and equip us. What? To, uh, for our instruction. All scriptures are given by the what? Let, let's go on over there. Let's go and get it. Get, get me, get, get, turn over there. 2 Timothy 3 and 16. Let's get it. Because all this happened, these things were written for our learning. Ain't that what it said? It's written for our learning that we might not follow the same pattern. Study to show yourself approved. All that time in Egypt that, that God heard the murmurings and crying, he didn't, he didn't, they wasn't crying out for, for God. He heard them crying. And remember what he promised Abraham. <laughs> they wasn't crying. They just hate they was in slavery. Because all them 400 years wasn't bad. Joseph was down there, remember. Wasn't he? Yeah, and they all so He was second in command under Pharaoh. Was he not? But when that other Pharaoh died and another one came up, said too many of these uh, Jews down here. These Hebrews, we need to enslave them. At least they become greater than us. And they put them in slavery. Then they went to cry. All them 400 years went bad. God heard the cry. They weren't crying for him. And he remembered what he promised Abraham. And he birthed a deliverer. He didn't pop him on the scene right then as a man. Little old baby. Why did God let it fester? When he letting it fester, what you doing? He trying to see how much bigger fool you go at. Because see, Moses could have been full grown, popped him up, got him out, and went on. But he was a little old baby. Moses' mama gave birth. They said, we want all the male child. We killing them. We got to get rid of this race. Moses' mama said, you ain't killing my child. What she do? Y'all know the story. She put him in a basket. First, she got some tar. Seal the basket. And, and let it dry so it wouldn't float or sink. Put the baby in there. Put the basket. And Moses' daughter, uh, uh, the Pharaoh's daughter, was down up now. And Moses' sister was following the basket. And she came back. Pharaoh, a daughter got the baby. Then, look at God. Moses' mama got paid to nurse the baby. That's my God. That's my God, baby. But God didn't bring him a full grown deliverer. Did he bring the Savior? No, the Savior had to be born. See, you got to understand, God is allowing you to go through to build character, to build endurance, to build patience. You want out now. No, you don't need out now. You need to stay in that brawler. I'm done. No, you ain't. You look crisp on the outside, but there's some stuff still up in. <laughs> Woo. Yes, uh, all scriptures is God breathed. Given by divine inspiration is profitable for instruction. Everything that happened to them is for our learning and instruction, for conviction to say it is to convict us to let us see the sin that we're doing, that Egypt did, Israel did in the wilderness, for a correction of error to help us straight, see it's to help straighten out the error. I used to love to hit a baseball announcer. That's the end of the third inning, no hits, no runs, no errors. But it is to correct the error, it is to help you get it right. Y'all can't be telling me. I don't want to be corrected. Well, you want to keep living foul. And restoration to what? See, conviction of error and restoration to obedience. That's what God, for training in righteousness. Learning to live in conformity to God's will. That's what the children of Israel fail to do. We not going to fail this. We ain't failing in this, y'all. Come on, y'all. God's will both public and private. When you ain't nobody in the room. You got integrity. When the room is full, you got integrity. Behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage. That's where we at, y'all. Lord, have mercy. So, give me 1 Peter 4, 12 through 14. This is where we got, we got, to, we got, to, we got to understand something. Then we're going to James 1. So, you're going to be tested. Jesus was tested. Peter was tested. What did he do? Custom made out. I'll die with you. Jesus said, no, you won't. <laughs> Lord, I'm willing to die with all Jesus, no, you won't. 
because they're coming at me tonight, and you go betray me. <laughs> you're going to deny me. No, I won't, Lord. Yes, you will. Before the cock throw, crow three times, you're going to deny me. Jesus flat out told him what he was going to do. Did he not? Yeah. Did he know enough to pass that test? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Why didn't John pass that test? I'll tell you why. John believed how much Jesus really loved him. Peter tried to prove his love. John just accepted the love Christ had toward him. He was following Jesus. Everywhere Jesus went to be judged, he went in with him. Peter was following, ducking behind stuff, watching, watching it from afar. The Bible says he was warming by the wrong fire. You can be in the wrong camp. He up there warm and cold. Wait a minute. Ain't you one of them disciples? No! You sound just like you so and so helpful, you, you little old. Get out of here. He cussed that girl out. <laughs> he just, he, he, his continent fell when he heard that rooster. Because Jesus told him. And he tells us. If we don't watch it and become teachable to study to show ourselves approved, we, the same thing can happen to us. Come on. Here we go. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeals which is taking place to test you. Your test ain't for me. Now, uh, over in Hebrews 12, there's a scripture in there that says, run the race that is set before you. See, with your race that you've been called to run, there's a test fitted for your race. You ain't going to be tested in what I'm testing, but my race got, got a different set of tests too. Your test got a different set. Your race got a different test. Because you running a race that's set before you. You can't run the apostle's race. I ain't trying to run the deacon race. I'm running the race that is set before me. And my test is, is a quite different than y'all. But they're fitted for you. And it's just right for you. And it ain't nothing that you can't handle. They tailor made for you. Ha uh ha. -huh. Run the race that is set before you. But something you got to do. If you don't do them two things they ask you to do, lay aside. Uh-uh. Every tra them track outfits they got now, totally dirty. They got ones that's out now. And back then, we were running track. We had them little old, them, them hot pants shorts we were running track in. Them things were short. Yeah, my days of Duke men short, basketball. So all that stuff was short. But one no bricks and one one nothing heavy. The track shoe was light, and I one number spikes on the on the ball of your feet because you don't pull be doing this. You running on you you kicking out. <laughs> you did so so ain't nothing about a track uniform is heavy, is it? But when you run in a race with lay aside every weight, what can slow you down? Uh, what's sin and what's a weight? What see what necessarily ain't a sin is a weight. So either way you're being held back. Uh-huh. Come on. Come on. Now, listen. Which is taking place to test you. That is to test the quality of your faith. The Bible said, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. But how well do you use your faith? You need to judge how well do you use your faith. Can you use heaven currency to get what you need in this earth realm? Because, you, you see, money don't, don't, don't mean nothing of that. You, your access, seek first the kingdom. By you using faith, pull down what you need from heaven. Money don't make it up there. Faith is heaven's currency. I asked Dwayne this. I preached this message one time. When you go to church, uh, come to God's house and put $100 in, it's a big. $100 is big to the church, but it's small in the mall uh, at the gas pump. Why is that? Why, why ain't the $100 big at the mall? Is that where your heart is? Because it's small, it's big at God's house. A hundred dollars is not a lot of money, is it? But at the mall, it's small. At God's house, I put a hundred in. But at the mall, you wishing you had several hundred. Why? Why? Come on now, help me. Because I'm, I, I want you to realize. See, if a if hundred dollars is a hundred dollars, no matter where you go, if it ain't big at the gas pump, it ain't big to God. It ain't big in the mall because you can go buy a hundred dollar worth of food. You're going to get a, you're going to get a, 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 
a, a thing where you put a two lead in. That's hundred dollar worth of food. <laughs> Baloney. <laughs> Let me hush. I've been thinking about that long that all. <laughs> anyway, come on, let's get this. All right, here we go. To test the quality of your quality. Is your faith has quality or is it raggedy? Is it shipwrecked? Is it old year little faith? Come on now. Is it because Jesus said shipwrecked? Paul used shipwrecked faith. Jesus said, oh, ye a little faith, oh, great faith, no greater faith. What quality is it? We would all love to say it's great faith. Well, look at your life and I'll tell you if it's great faith or not. Mm -hmm. So the test going to prove to you on what that is. Come on. Here we go. As though something strange or unusual is happening to you. Why, Lord? They told me when I got saved, all oh, was going to be good. That preacher lied to you. <laughs> but insofar as you are sharing Christ, is it that we don't want to bear no burden? We love him, but Jesus, I don't want to go through what you went through. Ain't that the church? Going back to the song, if I had way, you going to do what? Why? No, no. God wants you in the thick of things down here. You him? You represent him? Come on now. You've been deputized to speak on his behalf. Greater works than these. And we got all them songs singing about getting them, escaping here. Instead of singing the song that's going to help us. And like Matthew West said, Lord, I was upset when I seen all these people hungry and stuff. Why don't you do something? He said, I did something when I created you. I, I did something. Church don't want that responsibility. Ooh, they just so bad. Well, won't we have fixed down here then? He left us here to be right dab in the thick of the trouble. Come on. All right. It says here, sharing Christ's suffering, keep on rejoicing so that when his glory fill with his radiance and splendor is revealed, you may rejoice with great joy if you are insulted or reviled for bearing the name of Christ, you are blessed Listen, happy, life feel, life with joy, comfort in God's salvation regardless of your circumstance. Pull up, give me John 14. John 14. John 14, 17. And we're going to read out the 25. And this is going to take us home. I ain't going no further. John 15, 17, 22. So, uh, James said, I'll read it while she's getting there. Let me go to James 1. Listen to what he said. Listen. Listen, he said, be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. That's what it does. He said, consider it to be, consider it nothing to be joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various kind of trials. You ought to be glad that God is testing your faith. From faith. To faith that arouses the more faith. A lot of believers are stuck at square one where they first got saved. That's where they ain't went no further. And God ain't going to give them a test here or there. Come on. And I would ask the Father. What, I, I want, uh, uh, John, John 15. Let's start at verse uh, 17 through 25. John 15, 17 through uh, 25. All right. This is what I command you, that you love unselfishly seeking the best for one another. This is another area we tested in. Was Jesus stingy? Was Jesus selfish? All right. What about us? What about the universal church? All right. Listen. If the world hates you, and it does, what is the world? Hollywood, uh, artists, all, all this uh, world of music. Now, God gave all these people their voices to play instrument to sing for him. Michael Jackson never should have sung for the world. He should have been singing for God all the time if he had gave his life. But he chose to do what? Go to the world. Anita Baker, she got hooked on cocaine. Whitney Houston was in the church singing, went to the world. Why do we love to go to the world? Was that a test? What the world made it look better for? Because I heard people say the church don't want to pay. So we go to the world and get paid. Is it about money, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh?
proud of life. That's how the world gets you. Come on. Now, listen, if you belong to the world, listen, know that it hated me before it hated you. You're going to be hated, associated with Jesus. So get ready. If it belong, Listen, if you belong to the world, the world will love you. Uh-huh. People, I will never get attacked by the devil. Mm, well, okay. I would not know why. Satan ain't going to come at you because you on his team. As it, listen, as it, as it owns and would treat you with affection. See, Satan going to love on you till it's time to pay up. Uh, listen, to it, but I have chosen you. You no longer belong to it, but I have chosen you out of the world. Why do the church keep running back? Why did uh, children of Israel keep running back to Egypt? Huh? They loved it more than they loved God. Uh-huh. We got unfinished business in the world. That's why you keep going to it. I don't go to them places. Yes, you do. That's, that's one of the problems why things ain't working out. You keep running to those worldly places and thank God going to keep blessing you. He ain't. You, you're wasting your time. I can tell you. And because of this, the world hates you. Listen, you don't belong to the world and I, I reject the world. And I hate his system. I'm talking about the system that the world uses. Lie, steal, everything, the shacking, everything the, 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 the world is about, God hates. Remember and continue to remember that I told you a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. That's why you're being tested to see if you're going to be loyal. And people leave because I don't want to go through this. It don't take I've been church hurt. Satan whoop your behind. And soon as I the pastor go to touching them spot, you say it's me hurt you. You never got healed up. Amen. You got hurt out there in the world. And the word is trying to touch and see how bad the spot is. The word of God, Jesus, oh, it's bad. He 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 hitting on me. Pastor, when he preached that, he was talking about me. Really? Jesus wanted to, wanted to get it let up. That's the reason why he's talking about it. That's why I'm preaching on it. And most people say that's church hurt. You didn't get hurt there. You got hurt. Go back and think where that hurt happened at. Because a lot of times it wasn't here. It wasn't. And I can, I can say that what happened to me. There was unhealed areas in my life that people came in that did it in the world when the person I got, got in the church hit me in that same spot. But it was already hurt. Come on. Listen. I've chosen you out of the world because of this. The world hates you. Remember and continue to remember. I told you a servant is not greater than, they, than his master. If, if, now, if you think you're better than Jesus, this don't pose to happen to you. Oh, amen. Uh, if, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Okay. We got that? Get ready. If they kept my word. Listen, if they keep my word, they will keep yours also. Wow. What, is, what did he just say there? Listen to he said, if they keep my word, they will keep yours because you're going to say the same thing. So I don't expect the person to take nothing. I say, well, you won't accept Jesus' word. I'm going to say what he said. But they will do these hurtful things to you for my name's sake because you bear my name. What? Is that tested? And are identified with me for they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come or spoken to, you, to them, Listen, they would have not have the guilt of their sin. Jesus said, if I've not come and, and, and spoken to them, they would not have guilt because they wouldn't know they in sin. Because now they have no excuse of their sin. The one who hates me also hates my father. If I have not done them among the work of test and miracle, no one ever else did, they would not have the guilt of their sin. But now the fact is that they both have seen the works and have hated me and continue to hate me and my father as well. But this is so that the word which has been written in their law will be fulfilled. They hated me without cause. And if they hated him, who are you? Get ready. They, 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 Satan going, and God going to allow them people who ain't saved to really come at you. What you going to do? I'm leaving. Why? Stay in the fire. Why leave? Can I get one more verse? No, I won't. Can I get one more verse? 
10, 22. Matthew 10, 22. Matthew 10, 22. Matthew 10, 22. So, I used to love that song. Soon I will be done with all the trouble of this world. Mm -hmm. I was singing a lie. And you will be hated by everyone. Testing because of your association with my name. But it is the one who has patiently, it is the one who has patiently persevered and endured to the end will be saved. You got to go through. I just didn't have to go through that. If he went through it, who are you? Jesus got the taste slapped out of his mouth. Looked like hamburger meat in the face. Hit in his testicles. Ripped naked. Walking the street with that cross. Slapped naked in his birthday suit. He was stripped naked so you can be covered. And you can't go through nothing? I got a splitter, Lord. It's infected, I think. If he went through that for me, I'm here. Let's go. Let's roll. That's me. Let's kick some day over butt. <laughs> Let's go. Because <laughs> I like somebody going to give up on me. He, he right in the thick of things with you. He ain't leaving. Yeah, yeah. He in the ship. You going to the other side and he ain't saying nothing. Oh. Lay down and go to sleep and go for the ride. <laughs> or either speak to the storm. Because he said, oh, ye a little faith. You could have stopped this. He rebuked them. He got on them because they seen them do all the miracles and yet they sit there and complain other than speaking to the wind. They, then they say, what matter of man is this? Even the wind and the sea obey. So this is our message. So I'm going to say it again. The power of the Holy Spirit, relying on the Holy Spirit, helps you to pass tests. The Holy Spirit is going to be there with you in the test to help you. And we still going to go mark the wrong answer? Wow. So, get ready. Get ready. This, gonna, this, this new year that we in to authentify your faith? Yeah. Everything we've been teaching, you're going to be tested and tried. Go on, go through it. If you flunk, take it again. That's what I did. <laughs> I finally got it around the 20, 55, 60, 70 times. Y'all think I'm playing. I flunked a lot of tests. And most of my tests came because I did not trust the Holy Spirit.